Hey y'all, um, so in this video, let's go through problem 20. So problem 20 says, let f equal that, um, and g be the inverse function of f. So g is equal to f inverse of x. Got it. Given that um, f of zero is equal to one, what is the value of g prime of one? Notice that they're asking you for f inverse prime of one. They just thought like it would be cumbersome to write, I guess, I guess f inverse prime. Um, so, because they said g is f inverse, so this is saying f inverse prime. So you need to find the derivative of the inverse of f and evaluate it at one. One uh, boring, monotonous, and difficult way to go about it is to um, try and find f inverse. So you would write y equals 2x plus 1 cubed, swap x and y, and you know, through methods you've learned in algebra or um, pre calculus or whatever, um, solve for f inverse and then plug in, take its derivative and then plug in 1, right? Because, yeah, it's solving for f inverse is not sufficient. You need to find the derivative of f inverse. It's a lot of work, like I just said. So the alternative is that you memorize. Um, f inverse's formula, uh, f inverse prime formula, which is give it a function f of x, like we're given here, uh, without finding um, the inverse function, the derivative of the inverse, which is f inverse prime of x, is going to equal 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. Notice that I said you do not need to find um, f inverse. So seeing this uh, f inverse expression there might be a little unsettling, um, but I'll show you how you can get around that. So first of all, since again, g prime of one is f, um, asking us for f inverse prime of one, it must mean that g prime of x is equal to f inverse prime of x. So then g prime of one will be f inverse prime of one which is one over f prime of f inverse of one. And again, here's the part where you would have thought you need to find um, f inverse, but again, you don't need to. Why? In every case that they give you this, they expect you to use this formula, so there'll be sufficient information to help you figure out what the um, value of the inverse is as, at whatever value you'll need to find out. So here, we need to find out f inverse, prime, f inverse at 1. Okay, but they gave you this, which is f of 0 is equal to 1. If f of 0 is equal to 1, then it must mean that f inverse of 1 is equal to 0. Because f and its inverse swap x and y values. So there, that little problem, which you might have anticipated, is gone. So we have 1 over f prime of f inverse of 1 is clearly 0 as I just showed you. And so then, since you have f of x, you could get to f prime of x very easily. It's three times two x plus one squared times two, which simplifies to six times two x plus one squared. So that's f prime of x. So f prime of zero is going to equal six times, well, two times zero is zero, so zero plus one squared, which is six. So that this is going to equal one over f prime of six. I'm uh, sorry, f prime of zero, which is which, as we just calculated six. So the answer to this should be one over six. Um, I'll give you one last option, which is um, so we said I gave you the first route, which is to find f inverse and then to take its derivative and to plug in one. Second is to memorize this formula. So suppose you're like a really brilliant student but hate memorizing uh, formulas, then I can help you get to the f inverse prime formula very quickly. I do this more thoroughly and um, in more detail in my solutions to the 2003 multiple choice uh, AP, AB, and BC exams. But here's a quick run through it. So again, what you're after is a formula for f inverse prime of x, which I'd claimed is one over f prime of f inverse of x. Okay, how can you find out? Well, suppose that you're after 
dy dx where y is equal to f inverse of x that's really what you're after right so because dy dx would mean f inverse prime and that's what you're after so to start take f of both sides so if you do you get f of y is equal to x now take the derivative of this implicitly so that it's say f prime of y times by chain rule the derivative of y which would be one but then dy dx because you're doing the derivative implicitly and then you have to take the derivative of the right side also, which would equal 1. Remember, you are after dy dx, which is f inverse prime. So you just need to solve for dy dx here. And that's easy solving. So dy dx is obviously equal to 1 over f prime of y. But y was f inverse of x. So this is saying 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. Um, and of course, dy dx which is y prime there, is f inverse prime. So this left side is f inverse prime of x. I just showed you that f inverse prime of x is going to equal this. So if you hated memorizing stuff, you could just derive it as I just showed you how to. Um, and there. So I've abundantly clearly explained this. Uh,